Okay, so we are now about to cover the third step of cellular respiration. We've already covered glycolysis and the breakdown of pyruvate. And this third step actually has three different names. So it can either be referred to as the citric acid cycle, the Krebs cycle, or the TCA cycle. Citric acid cycle, Krebs cycle, or TCA cycle. At the end of the breakdown of pyruvate, we had a two carbon molecule of acetyl CoA. If you remember, just the acetyl portion actually contained carbons. The two carbon group is called an acetyl group. That two carbon acetyl group is going to be oxidized. So think about what does it mean to be oxidized? And it's going to create carbon dioxide, um, Na, uh, ATP, NADH, and FADH2. So we're going to cover this entire cycle and show how we get those values. Okay, so this goes back to the picture we showed before. Remember, glycolysis occurs in the cytosol. We then go into the breakdown of uh, uh, pyruvate, in which we end up with an acetyl-CoA. That acetyl-CoA goes on a cycle here in which we call it citric acid, Krebs, TCA, and then finally we'll end up in step four. So some background information about this cycle. It occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. What does that mean? That means it occurs essentially deep inside the mitochondria. Very important, this cycle is going to occur two times because the cycle occurs every time we encounter a molecule of pyruvate. And if you remember our, I'm gonna draw at the top, our six carbon glucose was eventually split into two three carbon molecules of pyruvate. So each of those molecules of pyruvate are going to go on this spin. So that entire citric acid cycle happens two times because it occurs every time we have a molecule of pyruvate. And remember, we have two molecules of pyruvate. So that's very important that you understand why it happens twice and some of the values that we get either per spin or per uh, molecule of glucose or at the end of the entire cellular respiration process, we're going to include two spins. So, as we talked about before, the acetyl is the two carbon group, and we kick off our cycle by having the acetyl being removed from the CoA. So right here, if, you, if we can zoom in just a little bit, you can see this two carbon acetyl group here. If you notice the arrow leaving, and I apologize, I can't use my pointer, the arrow is leaving and the coenzyme A is being removed. So again, this is our two carbon acetyl group. It's the two carbons plus the CoA here, so acetyl CoA. What happens is the CoA leaves. So all you have left is a two carbon molecule, which is known as acetyl, right? We've seen that word before. So this is our two carbon acetyl group. You see it's, uh, two carbons. What happens here? I'm gonna go back to the uh, words on the left. The two carbon acetyl group attaches to a four carbon molecule called oxaloacetate. So the two carbon acetyl attaches to a four carbon molecule called oxaloacetate, and that is going to form a six carbon molecule called citrate. Maybe that's helping you realize why it's called a citric acid cycle. But our two carbon acetyl group, which is seen here, attaches to a four carbon oxaloacetate, which is seen here, and it becomes a six carbon citrate seen here. Think of this as, um, let's say, 
jumping on a Ferris wheel. So I don't know if you've been on a Ferris wheel before and if uh, you understand the concept then you might not really want to pay attention here. But let's say, I don't know, you're on a date. <laughs> it's you, your oxalo, uh, your acetyl, and you're with uh, coenzyme A. You're about to get on a Ferris wheel. Right before you get on the Ferris wheel, coenzyme A leaves. They don't want to be a part of it. So, you being the two carbon acetyl group says, you know what? I'm going to get on the Ferris wheel anyway. As you jump on the Ferris wheel, there's already a new person there. Look, you have a brand new date. This person, new love of your life, they are called oxaloacetate, your acetyl. And coenzyme left you. That was kind of sad. But oxaloacetate and acetyl come together. Now you have a new couple name because it's two of you guys there. So now it's two plus four. Your new couple name is called citrate. Maybe that was a story that helped you. Maybe it didn't, but I'm just doing my best effort. Okay, so again, you have an acetyl group, acetyl-CoA. You come into this as being acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA um, is going to break because the coenzyme A will leave. Now you're just stuck being a two-carbon acetyl group. That two-carbon acetyl group jumps on the cycle where it meets oxaloacetate. The two plus four will form a six-carbon citrate. That six-carbon citrate, also seen here in step two of the image, will go on a spin. It will go on a cycle. And throughout that cycle is going to produce a number of molecules. So let me clear some of the screen for you. Okay, so like I like we talked about before a few times, um, you understand how we're beginning this cycle. I do want you to know that one of the reasons we call it a cycle is because this oxaloacetate is regenerated. So before we start talking about what we produce, let's look at that acetyl group binding with that oxaloacetate. The first step becomes citrate, and then it goes on a spin. As it goes on a spin, which we won't talk about really what happens to a lot of the, the carbon molecules necessarily, but I want, I want you to understand that it ends up at the same place it started. That's why it's a cycle. Even think about a circle. If a circle starts here, it's going to end up at the same place. That's what makes it a circle, okay? So we end up producing oxaloacetate. The final product, as we spin around, we end up at oxaloacetate. So if I say, what is the starting molecule that's found in the beginning of the cycle? Oxaloacetate. What's the ending molecule that you find at the beginning of the cycle? Oxaloacetate. It's the same thing. It ends at oxaloacetate. It starts at oxaloacetate. So by the time we're done, we regenerate it. Okay, so let's talk about items that we produce because this is very important. Throughout this cycle, we're going to produce a few things. One of them is uh, carbon dioxide. Let's focus on carbon dioxide because it's very important. You're going to produce two molecules of carbon dioxide per spin. Now, this is very important because the two molecules of carbon dioxide you produce are actually coming from the two carbon molecules that you started this entire process with. So remember, we have been able to account for all of the carbon within this cycle. We started off with six molecules or six carbon molecules found within glucose in our breakdown of pyruvate step we lost a carbon in the form of carbon dioxide then we had a two carbon molecule of let me split this and just show you it's pyruvate in case you're wondering how we got from six to three 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 in the breakdown of pyruvate, we lost carbon dioxide, a carbon. So then we had a two carbon acetyl group. And then now in this cycle, I'm showing you that you lost two molecules of carbon dioxide. 
guys that means that all of the carbon we started off with right you had three carbons here in pyruvate you lost one in carbon dioxide three minus one gives you the two and then in our cycle you lost two of those molecules here so we only started off with the two carbon acetyl group those carbons from your glucose are now gone all in the form of carbon dioxide so when you excel carbon dioxide you're actually excelling the carbon that originally was found in the glucose remember energy is neither created nor destroyed we're not losing it we're just changing the format of it so you took it from a a, a six carbon structure and we release it throughout the way make sure you understand if i say where does the carbon dioxide and cellular respiration come from you can be able to clearly point me to the different stages in which we created this carbon dioxide if i say where did the six carbons and glucose go or do we lose them throughout the process you should be able to say yes we lost them here 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 all of those things are very important okay so let's jump back down to um, some of the products that we created so again losing those two carbon dioxides is important remember this cycle happens two times so each of those acetyl coas goes through the cycle and both of them lose their final two carbons in this process we also are going to create or produce one molecule of ATP one molecule of ATP here's a big energy intermediate that we produce which is NADH so I apologize there's an extra H there but it's NADH and you see that here here and at the bottom here three molecules of NADH and then finally um, a new one we haven't seen so far throughout this process which is FADH2 gotta give it a new color here FADH2 and we see that at the bottom FADH2 so making sure you're familiar with the values associated with what is produced that's going to help you a lot so again let's say we took these cohen uh coenzyme a and i'm going to kind of finish drawing the picture just so you have a little bit of um you know some type of visual if you're if you're doing this on your own and you want to see how it works normally i would have a longer sheet of paper but i don't so i'm going to just pull this two carbon molecule over here so two carbon um acetyl a this is the third step which is let's call it citric acid cycle what happens here the first thing that happens here is we lose a um, coa then we are left with our two carbon acetyl group the two carbon acetyl group will interact with the four carbon oxaloacetate and then they will go on a cycle so i'm going to draw an arrow first the first stop is a six carbon citrate and then the rest i can just draw a circle okay so i know it's a little weird because i have one powerpoint screen but I want you to see that we started off with the two carbon acetyl CoA group. The CoA left, we just had two carbon acetyl plus the four carbon oxaloacetate. The first stop is making a six carbon citrate. And throughout the remainder of the cycle, what are some things that we produced? So I think I have purple for my carbon dioxide. Per spin. So I'm gonna say per spin, just so we're clear on where these values are coming from I'm producing two molecules of carbon dioxide I am producing one molecule of ATP I'm producing 
three molecules of NADH, and I'm also producing sorry, some arrow one molecule of FADH2. Okay, remember these two carbons are accounted for in these two carbon dioxides. Keep in mind this cycle happens two times. So per spin, these are my values. So per spin, I'm, I'm writing an asterisk, so you see this is the per spin amount. But if I ask you per molecule of glucose, please keep in mind that I ran out of space, but this cycle is just an extenuation of this one line. So this one line here, it's moving down the line. If I had a longer, a longer um, PowerPoint, I would be able to show you how it's just moving across, right? It's moving across. So this cycle happens um, for this particular molecule. And the reason it says 2x is because it also happens for this particular molecule. So the total values you have per molecule of glucose will be these values times 2. Because the cycle only happens when we have acetyl-CoA and we end up with two molecules of acetyl-CoA. So the citric acid cycle can be regulated um, and that just means we can stop, make it stop and go at certain times. The way we can regulate it is by looking at the availability of substrates. So imagine if we do not have something at this step, then obviously you can't go to the next step. So remember, a lot of these are enzymes, so we use substrates. So if we're running out of substrates, it's not present. And also some rate limiting steps. So let's say we do not have any oxaloacetate, we will not be able to start it because it only begins with oxaloacetate present. So that is going to be something if your body runs out or has a low amount, you cannot move forward in the step because this is critical to get the Ferris wheel or the cycle going. Um, this is the real picture of what's happening in a very detailed way, but I'm just showing you this so that you can truly see all of the enzymes. You see everything ends in ACE, um, and I want you to see there's so many steps that are involved, but we've simplified it into kind of the big picture. So one thing I'm hoping you're working on as we wrap up this portion of cellular respiration is some type of sheet, some type of documentation that has um, different stages. Right now we've covered just three, um, but how many ATP molecules do you have? How many are you taking to the next step as in your net products? Did you produce any carbon dioxide, NADH, FADH2? Um, what's the starting carbon molecule? So in glycolysis, it would be glucose. You might want to add a new column. What's the ending carbon molecule? In this case, it would be for glycolysis, it would be um, pyruvate. Right, making sure you understand those things. Adding notes, this happens in the cytosol. First step to happen in mitochondria. This happens two times. It also has three different names. Making sure that you kind of have a cheat sheet, for lack of better words, which helps you understand how everything is kind of connected. Okay, this concludes this lecture and there will be a remaining lecture on oxidative phosphorylation.